and also Joel Rubin, president of the Washington Strategy Group. He also served as former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State during the Obama administration. Uh, Victor and Joel, welcome to you both. I want to start with you, Victor. Uh, just explain to us what exactly is a spy balloon? Uh, how does it work? Uh, what are they typically used for, especially in light of the many number of satellites that a country like China also utilizes? Thanks for the question. There, you know, th this is one of, as you suggested, many different elements of China's intelligence gathering uh, campaign against the United States. They have satellites that operate 24-7 trying to collect information. Um, there are ma they do major work in terms of cyber online. Some folks might remember a few years ago the data breach of, the, uh, of OPM that took um, thousands, tens of thousands of Americans' personal information. Um, uh, they operate with human intelligence. And so these balloons, it's not really clear how much value added there is to them. I mean, there's some belief that, you, that you know, hovering over, they can get a higher resolution image of certain areas, particularly some of those areas in Montana, which, you know, have things that we can't talk about on, on, on television, but they are important sites for the United States in terms of our, in terms of our ICBM and nuclear capabilities. Um, but these are very high, at a very, very high altitude. Um, that, you know, they hover over a long period of time over an expanse of space and they collect through uh, either radio signals or imagery. They try to collect, uh, you know, uh, they collect on, on the ground. So, uh, Joel, now President Biden said that he gave the order to shoot down the balloon on Wednesday. Uh, those orders were just carried out, of course, today. Uh, was there a national security risk in waiting those few days? Uh, and if there was, was the risk worth it, given the number of Americans who may have been endangered below? Well, uh, Secretary Castro, uh, thank you for having me tonight. And uh, the president, he's uh, really executed this in a flawless manner. Uh, in fact, it not, there wasn't a security risk by having these hover over. Uh, we gained intelligence by having uh, the balloon hover over as we were disabling it, as Dan mentioned, and waiting uh, for this moment to shoot it down. Uh, the United States is able to understand better now how China conducted surveillance, better able to watch uh, the balloon and its effects. Uh, apparently, uh, China does have a fleet of these surveillance balloons. And this is not the first time the United States has, has uh, experienced a balloon flying over or near its territory. That is several times in the Trump administration, earlier in the Biden administration, but never this close directly over our territory. But we're not alone. There are multiple countries that have experienced this, and uh, it appears that they are now reaching out to the United States, uh, to the Biden team as well, to say that they too have seen these kinds of, of events. So uh, we actually learned a lot by having it hover over. No American lives were put at risk, as you, you say, uh, 12 miles spread or seven miles spread of, of debris. That would have uh, potentially been very dangerous for people under underneath uh, on the ground. So it, it was the right move to wait until it got over, over uh, coastal waters. Yeah, and uh, Victor, Dan uh, DeLuce just told us that uh, according to the U.S. government, they were able to jam the ability of this balloon to collect data, uh, presumably after it was discovered. I mean, for you, uh, if it had collected information, uh, what would your biggest concern be about the type of information that it could collect and the sensitivity of that? Well, I mean, I think um, uh, the point about the, the balloon's collection capability being jammed is an important one because it showed that there was no immediate risk, whether it was an in intelligence risk or a risk to, to, to other assets on the ground. Um, I, I think when they collect all this debris, we will find out what sort of information will be collected. Well, we might, we might not find out on the outside, but inside the U.S. government, they will. Um, and at the same time, you know, the administration might release certain bits and pieces of information that will embarrass the Chinese and, again, accentuate uh, the fact that there is this, you know, massive intelligence collecting campaign that the Chinese are taking against us. I should also say, Secretary Castro, that I've heard or seen on social media, some people say we do this too, meaning the United States, but that's not really, a, it's not really equivalent because we don't violate another country's uh, airspace and fly stuff directly within eyesight of people standing on the ground. It's an important point, and, uh, and no doubt uh, one reason for uh, the sensitivity of this diplomatically and perhaps 
uh, Secretary of State Blinken's decision not to make that visit to China. Uh, Joel, in the time that I have left, I want to ask you, why do you think China sent such an easily identifiable device over U.S. airspace? You know, China's behavior is getting more brazen, and I think that's what's so offensive about this right now, is that the secretary, as you mentioned, Secretary Blinken was about to go to Beijing, and here they are sending these balloons over our, our country and, and elsewhere. I think China has a sense of impunity right now that it's testing, and it was crucial to push back against this test. And so the president, by taking this action, being patient, doing it in the right way, is telling China, no, there are limits, and uh, uh, sending a strong signal that we're not going to play by the rules that China thinks it can set for the rest of us. Dr. Cha and Joel Rubin, thank you both.